YouTube Oz it going? The Goat House is back with my edge rusher rankings for the NFL draft. Doing this for every single position group. Recently did the interior defense line. A bunch of draft content here. We'll even be live during day one. And we'll have winners, losers, grades, day two mock throughout the NFL draft. So join us and join us on Twitter. Analysis for each pick on day two and three there. Uh, links been in the comments for they're looking for. Dallas Turner is my number one pass rusher. I do think it's a little bit of an underwhelming edge class. There's no elite guy. I think there's a drop-off after the first-round guys, but there's some sneaky guys that we'll talk about. Dallas Turner, you know, originally, I mean, he's been my number one for a bit now. Originally, was going to say he's worthy of a top-10 pick, watch more film. My God, does he does he have that feeling? And then I really sat down and thought about it, and, and maybe not right now, but you have to factor in that upside and I do think he has the most upside in the class. And, you know, what he could become is something special with more coaching. Um, because if you really think about it, he's a freak athlete. He has that length that you look for. He's not crazy lengthy, but he definitely, you know, out of the top pass rushers, the lengthiest one has that length you look for. And, you know, it's not like he's a raw prospect or needs to add production, you know, on top of all those things. He has production at the highest level against, you know, playing some of the best offenses in the country in the SEC. So, you know, with more coaching, you know, being able to use that athletic ability, you know, work with that athletic ability, the explosiveness and, and the length, you could definitely get more out of them in the next level. I've heard people, you know, around the league or former GMs say that they actually like Turner better than Will Anderson. And that surprised me. I'm not really there, but that surprised me. But I guess you factor in more that, you know, who has more upside. I honestly, I'd probably still lean with Will Anderson, but for him to be in that conversation and people think he's better as a prospect or has more upside, that's something. So could he go even earlier than we we're expecting here? But we talked about it long, explosive production, you know, good combination of things there, really quick get off. That's a big thing for me how they explode off the ball, if they're slow off the ball. That was my issue with Tyree Wilson last year, why I wasn't as high on him on, as everyone else. And I thought he was more of an inside guy or inside-outside guy. And, you know, it's only been one year, but he didn't really work out so far. So far, hard to say that for, for the Raiders. But I, I look for that get-off, something you can't coach. You either got it or you don't. Uh, Dallas Turner has it, but there's somebody with actually better get-off in this class than Turner we'll talk about in a little bit. Love the closing speed on the quarterback, too, to be able to finish and get that sack. Again, I think we talked about it. I think he has the most upside in the class, but there's another guy that's pretty close as well. I think he fits perfectly as a 3-4 outside linebacker. And I know team, it's not really like it used to be. Teams that run a 3-4, they're not staying in a 3-4 the whole game. You know, Teams are mixing up more now than ever, which I like, but... You know, teams that run a specific scheme or start the game with a specific, specific scheme, they're looking for a certain style of player. And so I, I think he kind of fits that 3-4 base outside linebacker spot. But I'm more of a fan of just go – if you need a pass rusher and there's a guy worthy of, of your pick, you just go get the best one uh, and, and work with him. That, that's kind of what I'm a believer in in today's game. Um, but there's going to be teams that are like, yeah, we might want more of the physical – Hand in the dirt, 4-3, you know, typical 4-3 defensive end that's going to shed blocks, you know, bull rush, you know, a little bit better. Um, so he's not going to be for everybody. Does struggle a little bit to shed blocks at the LSU game, really stood out in that category, uh, and then could add more strength. It kind of goes into the same thing there, being able to shed blocks and just being a little more physical. He is physical, but you wish he was a little bit more physical, but... Yeah, that, that's where I you know there's no elite prospect in this class, and we're used to kind of having one in terms of the in with, with the edge rushers. But yeah, that that was my biggest flaw for him was like when he, when someone's locked into blocking him, it's just very difficult for him to just really throw him off or make a move to get him off. So that's where it was a little underwhelming uh, at the top of this draft class. Uh, number two, which might be a little bold, I'm a big Chop Robinson fan, and I know there's a lack of production, consistent production. And it's tough. You need to have production at this position because if he continues in the NFL at the same production, which a lot of time that, that, that happens, then obviously he's not going to be worthy of the second best, maybe in this class. So it's a little underwhelming of a class, but, um, you know, so he needs to up his production. I think he will though. This, these are the top type of guys you take a chance on. These are the type of guys where it's like, obviously you don't want them to end up being bust, but if they end up bust, you like, you saw, you saw the vision, you, you, you know, you know what you went for here. It's a type of guy you want to bring in there. You want to try to coach up and get the most out of. And you, you see the crazy upside. The get off, 
The explosiveness off the ball is absurd. It's not elite as a prospect. It is elite as an NFL player. You cannot coach that. He is crazy off the ball. I love that so much. Uh, you know, I'm a big get off guy when it comes to pass rushers. Um, you want know, evaluating these guys. Absolute freak athlete. He's a play disruptor. You know, he doesn't have crazy stats. So the stat watchers maybe don't love Chop Robinson. But if you actually watch, he disrupts plays. He makes an impact. Uh, you know, more than the stats show. He, Michigan game. Um, you know, last time he played Michigan, he he was causing hurries on JJ McCarthy and uh, and really disrupting plays. And they were so close to being sacks. And to me, those are just major wins, major wins. And they could turn into sacks one day with a little more coaching. Um, but they're essentially the, you know, they're they're right there with how much of an impact they are, you know, compared to sacks. But yeah, he possesses traits again that just can't be coached. Like with the freak athleticism he has. Um, and he has some power. I wish he was a little stronger, but he has some power to go along with that. I thought he's a little more powerful the last time we seen him play in you know, more recently games than, you know, two years ago. Um, that get off, uh, you know, all that. You can't coach those things. You want to coach the rest out of him. So you'd rather have it that way than the other way around, you know. So I think he has a huge ceiling. Uh, you know, he, again, not a lot of sacks, but he's on the brink of getting a lot more. Just explodes off the ball. Um, and some people kind of give comparisons to former Penn State edge rusher Micah Parsons, like not super long, was a little raw at the edge position, but man, he's a freak athlete that just explodes off the ball, and, and the way he closes on the quarterback is very impressive. Uh, I think he's pretty scheme versatile. I, I could see him playing 4-3 end or 3-4 outside linebacker. Um, again, a lot of teams kind of mix it up where they're not staying in one or the other. Um, that's kind of perfect for Chop Robinson in today's NFL. But yeah, again, the negatives lacking that consistent production. So there's a lot of people that are low on him. There's, there's some people that are really low on him, like maybe second round because they just don't love the lack of production. Um, and they want him to finish better, but I'm telling you, he's more of an impact than, than the stats show, but we do need to put it all together. We need to, he needs to finish better. He does drop in coverage as well. Something else we want to add, which kind of takes away from his reps of getting more stats. Uh, he definitely could more add strength when he played the physical blockers. I thought more so in 2022, uh, Dewan Jones, who's Ohio state standout tackle and was very good for the Browns this year. He was putting him on his ass, you know, so that actually popped up a little bit. And so there's other people, everybody that's low on him isn't, you know, a lot of those guys are stat watchers, but some of those people might be, that might be the thing. And I can understand that's a legit negative rather than the stats. You know, he, he you put him on his, you, you put him on the ground a little bit. You know, I, I thought that was more so a two years ago thing, two seasons ago thing than this past year. So I thought he got stronger, but um, so that's kind of my, my main issue with him where I was kind of going to drop maybe a little bit or if I would have had somebody else ahead of him. Um, but uh, I just love the upside. I want to work with this kid. It's a guy you take a shot, uh, a chance on in the first round. Uh, and Leatu Latu from UCLA is number three. And this is tough when it comes to rankings because Latu would actually be ranked higher. They talk about it in the negatives there. Uh, but he has a major concern, a major risk with a past neck injury uh, that actually forced early retirement. That was when he was at Washington a few years ago. So. Now, he, he played the last two years just fine at UCLA, so that keeps us optimistic, um, but it's a little scary with, with, the, with the neck injury. We've seen guys like a different position, but a defender and Leighton Van Der Esch, that was a big issue for me, for him, um, coming out of Boise, and he actually just retired early, and that was kind of an issue for him. So those neck injuries, there are certain injuries that are a little scary, like that. it just can happen just like that, and boom, that's it. You know, you, you wasted your pick. It's tough to say that with a good player like this. So it is a little scary. We had an issue with Jalen Phillips with concussions. I didn't have much of an issue because he just had so many concussions in a row where it's like, God, if he has another one this year, that's going to be scary. You know, we, we're, you know, everyone's still learning more and more about concussions. So they medically retired him. Uh, then he went to Miami and he played and he seemed fine. I think he was more just very unfortunate uh, and how many concussions he had in a short amount of time. So it's not something to me that said, like, yes, that's going to keep popping up. You know, he's, he's had some injuries, though. Um, but that didn't really affect my grade on him. This is a little different. Again, it, one bad hit, neck thing pops up. We see some players having neck issues. I mean, Chase Young just had is, is going to have surgery this offseason. It's a little scary. Um, 
You know, so that's my worry with him. He would at least be two. He'd be two. I Dallas Turner's locked in my one. But if I didn't, if Latu didn't have that concern, he'd easily be two ahead of Chop Robinson. Even though I love the upside there, and uh, he'd be really close to Dallas Turner. So that is the issue there. Um, he's a major impact player, though. He impacts the game in so many ways. You know, getting production, getting after the quarterback, getting pressure, um, standing up, hand the dirt, playing inside, stopping a run, dropping in coverage, getting his hands on the ball that way. So he's arguably the most skilled rusher right now. So that it just shows how good he is. Uh, and the again, there's a lot of risk with that injury, which kind of keeps him from being the, at the top. But uh, I, why I say he's the most skilled rusher is because I kind of go into the collection of moves that he has. It's just so much finesse. You know, wins with so much finesse, strong, quick hands. Uh, absolutely love that. He can shed blocks. You know, it's it's not the reps not over once he's blocked, and he's pretty scheme versatile. I, I can see him four three end or three four outside linebacker. You look at him, you kind of get outside linebacker vibes. But uh, I think you play either. They even slid him inside sometimes, which I'm uh, not going to be as much of that in the NFL. Um, I, I hope not. Like he's he was pretty solid there. It's just he's so much better off the edge. There was so many reps. Like I haven't seen you know watching games as consecutive plays where he's inside and like put him outside you know put him outside um more more of an impact out there but then how physical the guys are inside in the nfl and the past injury you'd like him outside a little bit more but um for the negatives we talked about the past injury which is a little there's probably some teams that are like first round pick you know very very valuable fifth year option ah we'd rather give it to someone else we trust is gonna be there for the long haul like so how lengthy of a career is he gonna have is a big question but um not overly explosive which you do look for when it comes to edge rushers um like the way turner and robinson explode off the ball um the explosive testing drills the combine too you saw the it kind of matched up to the tape uh, which weren't awful for Latu. Uh, and it feels like he's close to his ceiling. Like, And it's really good right now. He's pro-ready, but this is kind of what you're going to get from him where Turner and Robinson, like their ceiling is... Like, Latu's probably a little bit better, more polished of a player right now. Like here and Turner's here, but the ceiling it, you know, it is a big difference there to me. Um, so we are going to put him at three, but definitely way more polished than Chop Robinson. Robinson so just the, the risks here, I keep that in mind in, in terms of my rankings. Uh, number four, I'm going to go Jared Verse, uh, which going into the offseason, I thought I'd be higher on Verse, but still a really good football player. Those teams looking for just strictly a 4-3 defensive end, like physical dude, helps in run support. Here, here's your guy. Here's your guy. So there's going to be teams that prefer him over other guys. Um, so he's definitely different. We talked about Dallas Turner is more that outside linebacker. The next two guys, were, they're pretty scheme versatile. Verse, more that end more physical than the rest of the guys we talked about. So they're all different. So that's where the rankings, you know, some people may be a little iffy about rankings and, you know, more about how good they are, you know, the valuation and where they fit uh, because they're really different, you know. So uh, maybe versus number one in his specific category. Uh, but physical explosive end, that I think he shows up at big moments. That's where I like him. Like I need him to show up, get pressure, or make a run stop or – get a sack and I feel like he does that so that that's the part of him I'm like man that's why I like uh Kayvon Thibodeau so much I thought he showed up in the big moment so um a different player but what I like about verse there he's great versus the run he's probably better than the rest of the guys versus the run lots who's pretty good against the run but um very physical you know can read the run well pretty instinctive in that category dominant bull rush he'll just drive the tackle straight back into the quarterback or and make the sack or disrupt the play so love that um probably the best of the bull rush of the of the first three too so there's categories where versus number one but we have him at number four so I guess if you put it that way, it looks like a pretty decent class at the top. But again, no elite guy at the top. And I think it dies off after these couple got these four or five guys here. Uh, but I do like the power, the combo of power athleticism. Uh, what I don't like about him, what I was a little disappointed about watch when I when I was watching him, is he plays very tight, uh, lacking that lacking that flexibility. And that showed up on tape. And then it showed up the combine. He tested better than expected. He measured in better than expected. But when you see the on-field drills, it kind of showed up. You know, in some of those drills, he's really, really tight. Um, kind of like a one, you know, length or one. I'm trying to think of the word runner, where he's kind of the same. 
he's pretty stiff when, when, when he moves. He's not. He, there's not going to be reps where he's flex, you know, flexing or bending more than than others. It's kind of the same every single time. Um, does rely on that bull bull rush. He's definitely not a one trick pony. Uh, definitely more than that. But he he that is his go to. There's not really a collection of things where he wins. He'll try some other things. Um, and then teams looking for like that three four outside linebacker. I I think they would. Pass and then why then they would have other guys higher on their board for sure. So kind of the opposite of Dallas Turner, uh, really uh, here. And then number five, man, Darius Robinson. And you could I almost grouped with the defensive lineman, which he is a defensive lineman. We talked about we Turner's an outside linebacker versus defensive, and the other guys are pretty scheme versatile. But Robinson's either the either the inside or he's both. He's inside outside guy. He's gonna. He's going to play defensive end no matter what scheme he's in. He's going to play three technique. He's going to play D tackle. He actually played more reps at D tackle throughout his career than uh, off the edge, but he switched to the you know off the edge this year, And but he did slide inside. He played over the tackle as well, and it, you see more upside there. You see him play better, and then he goes to the senior bowl, and everyone's like, okay, this, this is where this guy belongs, but we got to move him around at the same time as well, but... Um, you know, around the senior bowl time, because he was dominant there in the one-on-ones. And um, as a guy, I moved up in the first round. And I started watching, you know, and then the combine happened, actually. And and he was lacking uh, the, in terms of the testing, like the speed. And then you watch the tape, and it does definitely show up. It's like, man, maybe he's more of a round two guy. But the more and more I watch him, the more I like him. I want to like him more, but we'll start with, start with the negatives. He, he is really lacking that closing speed. It's sometimes at the combine, like... Sometimes the combine's confusing with the 40s and you know all, all those agility drills. Um, it's like, yeah, the tape, they looked way faster. So then you kind of write off the combine. But it did match up here um, because there's a lot of times where he'll shed the block um, you know, or win with his length, but then he can't fully close in on the quarterback because he is lacking that. He is definitely lacking that closing speed or when he has to get on an angle. I've seen him close in and make sacks, so I'm not saying he doesn't. I've seen him get on a downfield on an angle you know, a cross field behind on the run, going the opposite side of the field and make a play. But the closing speed shows up quite a bit in that category. So if he had some more speed and closing speed, I mean, we might be talking about number one in this class. You know, we actually might be talking about number one because the rest of it looks so good. Um, you know, but that is a big thing in today's NFL. So that's like that part of it's like, God, round one a little early, but the rest of it's so good. Um, that I, I, I'm a big fan of Darius Robinson. I'd take him in the back end of the first round, depending on who's in the board. Um, but since we were starting on the negatives, yeah, he's a little bit of a tweener. So some teams might go like, where does he belong? Where do we put him? Like we prefer speed off the edge. He's not that. So won't be for everyone. And he still definitely is learning the position. It's kind of just rely on the strength and length, but it's, he's pretty good without those things, but he is a powerful, powerful end with inside outside versatility. Again, he had a lot of reps on the inside. He's going to play all over the place. The next level. You're not going to stick him in one spot. Um, and that's what I wanted from Tyree Wilson, Texas tech pass rusher last year who went really early and was a little disappointing in year one. Uh, but I think Wilson's a little more athletic, but the difference is Robinson actually explodes off the ball way better than him. And he's a guy that's going to play like he should inside and outside. He has elite length and he uses it well. Um, instantly, you know, keep, keeps offensive tackles from getting in on him or closing in on him. And he's able to use his power with that length and just throw guys off him. Um, the bull rush is ridiculous. He's a man on a mission. It's like, I'm getting to the quarterback. See him blow through two blockers like that. It, it's... There's times where you're like, holy cow, like this guy is dominant. So, I mean, there's like that, like those parts of like the, of the positives for Darius Robinson. I'm like, this guy could be the best in this class, but it's like, God, the other guys are so much more athletic and they close in on the quarterback way better. And it's an athletic game today and he's athletic. It's a speed game today. Um, so it's tough, but it's just a guy I want to like so much more. I just wish he had a little bit more speed, but in this type of class, you take him and you consider him in the back end of the first round. So why not? So it's been a little bit of a roller coaster for me. Not too much. It's like second round, senior bowl, first round, combine, second round. Watch the tape. Still second. Watching a little bit more tape. Man, this guy's got a lot of potential you know, off the edge, but he's versatile as well. We'll bump him up to the end of the first round here. And it's I'm tempted to put him over some of the other guys too, but those guys are just a lot more athletic. And compare, he's stronger than Verse, but Verse is so strong, physical, really good against the run. And he's just more athletic. Um, so that would be the difference.
there. Uh, the next group of guys here, Adisa Isaac from Penn State, another Penn State pass rusher, a little more productive than Chop Robinson. Not quite as explosive, but he's pretty explosive. Uh, I would like him 3-4 defense, 3-4 outside linebacker, but I think he fits either. Uh, Penn State ran more of a 4-3, four, more four, like more defensive end looks. Um, but another upside guy, pretty athletic, pretty explosive. Has some power behind him as well. I'm surprised he's not talked about a little. People probably got him around this range, but I'm surprised he's not talking about more of that next guy after the first round potential guys. Uh, Braylon Trice, same thing. Well, they're different players, but same thing. I'm surprised he's not ranked up here a little more. Guy just made plays. Like he he made big time plays and big time moments for Washington off the edge. Um, impact player, going to get after the quarterback. You wish he was a little longer. Um, that's really it for him. You wish he was a little more explosive. He is a little tight. You wish he was a little more flexible as well, but he's athletic enough. Um, he gets off the ball pretty quickly, and, he, and he's got some pass rush moves to him, and he just makes plays. The guy just goes out in there and consistently makes plays. So I like Trice there. Thought about a little bit of a comparison there with Alex Highsmith. Um, Highsmith the better, but um, obviously what he's become, but uh, some similarities there. I spent a little stronger. Uh, Gabriel Murphy, another guy I want to rank higher. Another guy I want to rank higher. Another UCLA pass rusher. I like his game a lot. He he's just severely lacking length. Uh, like thirty inch arms, like or thirty point five, whatever it is. It, it's one or the other. Um, he if he was like if he had thirty two in that thirty two is actually considered a, you're a little bit lacking. But if he had thirty two inch arms, I, we'd be talking about him at least at the top of this list on your screen right now because he's good. He's, he's explosive, super good athlete. Um, he's versatile too. Like you you stand him up, rush him off the edge, you put his hand in the dirt, he, he'll, he'll stand up over the guard or in between the guard and the tackle. Like he'll stand up in, in places and it's be considered a blitz at that point. So there's a lot of that in the NFL that is working right now. Um well, I mean, I guess it's been working for a little bit, but uh, like how Melvin Ingram used to play, but way bigger. Uh, Zedarius Smith kind of plays like it, but again, a lot bigger. Um, you know, Arden Key, how Arden Key's used as like a key rotational guy. Key? Key rotational guy when he was with Jacksonville and Tennessee. He's like, come in. He's like, what is that guy going to do? Where is he going to rush from? He's so explosive. And again, these guys are way longer than Murphy, so that's the issue. Um, but these these are weapons in today's NFL um, and he and he can do it from anywhere. Like he can explode in the backfield. I wish he would finish a little bit better. Uh, he would disrupt the play, but kind of whiff on the tackle sometimes. But he can tackle. I seen really good rap and you know takedown. Um, it's a guy, as you could tell by the way. I'm excited. I want to put him higher. I want to put him at six. It's just he's probably going to be a rotational guy, and some teams are going to be really concerned about that length because he's really lacking the length. Um, so I think Isaac and Trice have a better chance of being every down compared to Murphy, but Murphy kind of fits today's style. Marshawn Neeland from Western Michigan, another upside, you know, big physical upside guy. Wouldn't put him past, put it past him to play on the inside sometimes, like a three technique D tackle. But he is a defensive end; he's an edge guy, um, so he'll probably fit the four three. Um, but you wish he was a little more productive, but he disrupted plays a little bit more than the, the stats show. Uh, I think his best football could be ahead of him. He's pretty quick for his size. He's not super speedy, but he's pretty quick, shifty, um, you know, for his size, really good, strong bull rush. He's a physical dude. Uh, Austin Booker, I'm going to put at 10. There's a lot of people that love Austin Booker. I'm not quite there, but I am going to rank him in the top 10 because upside, he has limited reps. Uh, he's a finesse type player. Um, really good dip, like bend move on the outside, a L- little bit Harold, Harold Landry, like, um, in that category, Landry was a much better prospect, much better. Um, but and he's you know, Booker's pretty long, somewhat athletic, pretty athletic. Um, he's just a little too patient for me. Otherwise I'd put him higher. And a lot of people probably have him higher. Uh, they probably have him higher than, you know, Trice Murphy, maybe Isaac too. Um, I'm not quite there. He's a little too patient for me. He's inconsistent in the run game, but he has limited reps and with, and he really took off this year, getting in the backfield, making plays. He's got, he's got a plan. He's got, again, he's got moves. He's got finesse. Uh, I think with more coaching, 
uh, he could be a lot better. My my issue is sometimes you don't really see the, uh, the co- coaching in terms of the explosives, like the get off. He's a little patient for my liking, but he gets the job done. And it's fun, you know, when he when he gets after the quarterback, the ways he gets after the quarterback. Jonah Ellis would be next, and man, that's a tough one too. It's a guy you want to put in your top ten because. He gets after the quarterback, and he's explosive off the ball. He flies off the ball, and I love that. He's got some pass rush moves. The spin moves pretty nasty. He's flexible. He's athletic. He gets to the quarterback, and he does it in in beautiful ways. Uh, my issue is how involved will be in the run game. So I guess a little bit of Booker could be like a rotational guy at first. Uh, same with Murphy. They're in different ways, though. Um, sometimes he'll kind of take himself out of the play, just going straight for the quarterback in the run game. Um, you know, I do think some of the physical tackles in the NFL will kind of, they won't let him do what he did, uh, you know, in college, they'll kind of put him in the ground and, you know, a little bit. So it could add a little more physicality, but he's kind of like a highlight type guy, like, you know, uh, finesse, speedy, quick gets after the quarterback. But I just think he's going to be a specifically like a third down, like a pass, passing down type guy like I'm pretty confident with that early on and Murphy I said the same thing but Murphy man he, you can line him up anywhere and he explodes through the line of scrimmage I just like him a little bit more uh, so that's the difference I guess other guys more likely to be an every down guy but he's a better pass rusher just strictly pass rusher uh, than some of the other guys uh, Braswell next I wasn't thrilled with this tape he's another one that's a little too patient for my liking uh, but Pretty good combination of traits, you know, athletic traits and a decent amount of length. Uh, played at Bama, maybe more upside if they just kind of let him just go off the edge. So maybe sometimes they didn't really allow him to do that, you know, drop him coverage. But, yeah, a little too patient. But, again, maybe that was a Bama thing. I, I wasn't thrilled with this tape. Uh, Javon Solomon is, a, is, I guess, a sleeper as well from Troy. Uh, but he's going to be next up, you know, just behind that top ten. Uh, you, you wish he had a little bit more length. That that's a, you didn't play the best competition. Wish he had more length. So that's kind of the issue with him. But he's good. He's really good. Explodes off the ball. He has backfield production. He has, you know racks up the tackles for loss. He racks up the sacks. Um, he played a lot on the inside, actually over the tackle. Um, sometimes even inside that, it was close to 50-50. I'd say like fifty five. 45 in terms of percentage, but actually the higher end playing on the inside. So, and he was pretty good there, but when he played off the edge, he was really good. I think Troy just kind of put him where they needed him most because this guy is just the best player on that team. Their running back was pretty good too, but, um, it has a pretty good program actually. But, um, I, you know, so I think in the NFL where he belongs off the edge and probably rotational at first, I think he's got upside there because he looks really good. But then having that experience on the inside, I think a little bit, I mean, not com- fully comparable with Will McDonald last year, who I know disappointing to play a lot, but he has a lot of upside. But he played out of position at Iowa State. Like they used him inside more than out, and he was a natural on the outside. Um, so it's just a little bit more about getting reps. So it's a little bit raw of a prospect there, maybe why he didn't get going in year one. I think somewhat similar there, like a poor man's. Uh, you know, just get him in the right spot, but he's explosive, uh, gets in the backfield. And there's quite a few other guys that can, we could put on that next up list. Um, I, a lot of buzz on Muhammad Kamara from, from, uh, Colorado state. Cause he's super explosive, productive, uh, very athletic to test well at the combine. Again, he's productive. Um, and he's fun. My issue with him is really short steps. Like there's no stride to his game. And then you don't really see too many of those guys thriving in the NFL. So that's kind of, that's maybe where I'm not, I like them. I love what I see besides that part, but I'm not quite as hyped as some of the other people. And some sleepers, like smaller school guys, Jalex Hunt, a really small school, Houston Christian, lit up the combine. He used to play safety. Safety turned pass rusher. That's something. And he, I don't want to say he's a natural, but he's, for a, a defensive back turn, turn edge rusher, that's pretty impressive. You know, he has the traits you look for, the length, the athletic ability. Um, he had some good production. You could see him get across the field pretty well as well, track guys down. Um, it, it's definitely a raw guy. Like, he's not going to start or not even close right away. But the upside is through the roof. And a sneaky one here for you, Bo Richter from Air Force. Maybe he won't even get drafted. Uh, but he played edge. He played an uh, edge and off-ball linebacker for Air Force. I think most people will probably rank him with the linebackers because his athletic traits and his body type lacking length for the edge. 
put him at linebacker, and I understand that. I just love the way he rushed off the edge. Dude's a freak. Like he he explodes past, and he can shed blocks as well. Tested very well at the pro day. Gets after the quarterback. Um, so could be a unique player. You use him off the edge and off ball. Could be like a rotational blitz type guy, or could he be like an uh, like a Van Ginkle type guy? He is severely lacking length. So it's just kind of your later round Gabriel Murphy, perhaps. He's fun, though. He's really fun. Uh, he's a big-time player for Air Force, so I'm surprised he's not getting any love at all. But I, I would take a shot on him later, definitely later in the draft. I think he's better than a lot of guys that are getting talked about, actually. But there's some people that might not even have him in their on their board, like rankings at all. So that's, that's a little surprising to me. But um, he also didn't start playing football until like later in his career in high school. Weird calling that a career, but uh, later in his time in high school, so I, maybe he's just getting going, and he he get he makes an impact, you know, for a guy that's just getting kind of getting going there, uh, and he hasn't really found that. And that could be an issue, but he hasn't really found that firm position for him. But I also think that's like a positive, like if he's this productive and this good when he hasn't really figured out where he where he's at yet in his football career. I don't know, you know, if somebody puts him in a, in, a, in the right spot and gets him like consistent, gets him going, like. Like he could be spe- like he could be something. So um, that's where I'm at with the edge rushers. We did interior defensive line. Um, you know, and a guy like Darius Robinson could be grouped with them. I put Brand Dorless uh, with with that group. I like him better inside. He put on weight as well, but he can be an edge rusher as well. The Oregon defensive lineman. So uh, there's always those kind of interchangeable guys, which is fun. Um, but yeah, I do think there's a drop off after the like the legit guys at the top, and there's no elite guy, but then there's definitely a little bit of a drop off. So if you need a starting pass rusher, um, you need you may need to work early. Uh, I think there's gonna be better players on the board, other positions like receivers and tackles, for an example. Like if you're picking around two, chances are there's gonna be a better player than an edge rusher. Um, you know, at a different position, like one of those positions. So I think if someone's taking an edge rusher, they're kind of getting desperate a little bit. So. I guess depending on the team, who they take, who was on the board, which pick in the second round, but I'm most likely going to view it as like a little bit of a desperation pick there. So that's where I don't love the class, but there's some sneaky guys here. Um, Let me know your guys' thoughts. Uh, We got off-ball linebackers, corners, and safeties, maybe not in that order to do. My big board, my guys, more mock drafts. Uh, more rumors videos and we have you covered on twitter as well so if you can join us live stream day one of the nfl draft i'm excited i'm excited about all of it always am best time of the year it's gonna do it thanks for watching goodbye